Is the new S650 actually a whole new generation of Mustang? Or is it just a refreshed version of the S550 we have currently? We're going to attempt to answer that question for you in this episode of Tony's Fords and Mustangs. By definition, generation is, and I'm going to read this real quick off my taped up note, life cycle of design for specific make and model. Now, does that ring true for the S650? We know that it's really an S550 that's got some pretty major facelifts happening, maybe in the front fascia, the rear fascia, the rear quarters. The panels have been massaged. The proportions stay the same. The drive lines are relatively the same. The Mustang GT now is reported to have 450 horsepower, the same as the outgoing S550. Of course, if you want to know how to get 10 horsepower back, I'll leave a link down in the description. You can watch that video. But really, we're looking at the same driveline. The Dark Horse Mustang, it has a new intake on it. It's got dual throttle bodies. It has the strength and connecting rods out of the GT500. That's new, reportedly, at around 500 horsepower from Ford Motor Company. But is it all new? Eh, not really. Transmissions, standard is a six-speed. Options, A10 automatic. Is that anything new? No, not really. The GT Performance Pack, that's going to come with Brembo brakes, brake ducts, the torsion rear differential. You'll get the strut tower brace. Optional are Recaros, the Magna Ride. Basically the things that you could get on this car in 2021 through 2023. So that's not a whole lot new. Dark Horse, those things aren't optional. They come with it. So you'll get the Magna Ride suspension. You'll get the torsion differential, you'll get the Brembo brakes on the car, you'll get the brake cooling ducts, you'll get the oil coolers, you'll get the rear differential coolers, pretty much the same as what I have here in my 2022 Mach 1. One thing that is new is how they're going to update the vehicle. Currently, our cars are updated, at least the sync systems, the nav systems are updated via Wi-Fi. Ford's going with a fully networked ECU update. In other words, they're going to update the car by wire, by satellite. Now, they say they've locked down the ECU. That's going to make it more difficult for hackers to break in. It's also going to make it more difficult for tuners. I'm not sure if I want to receive updates by satellite. If you watch this channel, you'll know that I lost my MP3 support over a Wi-Fi update for the SYNC 4 system in this car. I didn't ask. It wasn't optional. It just was part of the update. The MP3 player stopped working. I had to find a workaround. I came up with one with a USB key. If you want to know how to do that, I'll also link that video down in the description. It wasn't something I was able to opt in for. It just was part of the update. Say you get a tuner that can hack into that ECU and make your tune for you. Who's to know that Ford just doesn't overwrite it? And they don't overwrite it when you shut the car down overnight. That's when the updates are going to come, when the car's not in use. They'll be synced in down by satellite. There goes your tune, possibly. You know, I don't know that for sure, but certainly seems like I could do that. I digress a little bit. To get back to whether this is a new generation of car, I want you to think back to the first gen. So let's look at first gen Mustangs, 1965 through 1973. And there's kind of our first problem is if you look at a 65 Mustang, it doesn't look anything like a 71 through 73. 65 engines are different from 71 through 73s. The platform, the entire car has changed. It's the 71 Mustang is nowhere near a 65 Mustang, yet they're all first gen. So I could argue that the 71 through 73 is the sec actually the second generation of Mustangs. The generation of cars is labeled by the manufacturer. If Ford wants to call the S650 the, the next generation of Mustang, they can do that. Whether you agree or disagree, I'm just happy that we're getting a Mustang with an internal combustion engine. If you have friends who own Challengers or have friends that own Camaros, they're not going to have this option very much longer. The Challenger 2023 is the last year for them, at least in their current form. There's some rumors there may be a V6 dual turbo. Who knows what's going to happen there? GM has said the Camaro is dead in 2024. They're going to come out with a 2024 Camaro and that's it. We're going to have the Mustang at least till 2030 with an internal combustion engine. Call it whatever generation you like Ford. Just keep putting engines in these cars and I'll be happy. So there's my real quick take on whether the S650 is actually the next generation of Mustang. But at the end of the day, Ford's the one that says this is the next generation. They could put stripes on it and call it the new generation Mustang and it effectively would be. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.